Sovereign coming before you yet God to say thank you we bless your name you've been a good God and you're good because you had us on your mind and you woke us up this morning calling us by name that's just how special we are to you so God we came into your house to give you an uninterrupted unadulterated praise because you're worthy I said, because you're worthy. In good times, you're worthy. In bad times, you're worthy. In up times, you're worthy. In down times, you're worthy. Even when everything else is around, you're worthy. Worthy, 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 worthy to be praised. Bless your name, God. Now we come to hear something from you. Speak through these lips of clay. Decrease me that they will only see Jesus. And let us soul look up with a steadfast hope, and all wills will be drawn to thine. Draw us nearer in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Take your seat if you can. Good morning, family. I'm an OG with Sharon Baptist Church. I go back to when 
Bishop Reed was candidating. Come on, somebody. For 59th Street. Come on, somebody. Sharon Baptist Church of 59th. Come on, the old building. Y'all, some of y'all youngins don't know what we're talking about. But if I got a few gray hairs that know what I'm talking about, we're talking some over 40 years. Come on here, somebody. Amen. And I need you to help me let him know that even though he is out of this place, we love him and we bless the Lord from him. So, well, Sharon, please, please give God a good hair clap of praise for your pastor, your bishop, your prophet, your apostle, the one who prays for your soul, the one who answers the phone when you call, the one who is on call 24-7, the one who God has given the vision of this place. I just need a few folk. Y'all forgive my Pentecostal background, huh? But the Bible says give honor where honor is due. God bless you. Thank you. And eh, 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 don't take your seat because you got to give it up for the lady of the house. The lady, I said, the one and only. The lady of the house. Come on, somebody. Amen. The lady of the house and her beautiful self. God bless you. Lady Lynn Reed. Y'all, 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 come on, ladies. Y'all, y'all can't hate. Don't try to be second or third. There's only one in the house. Come on, hear somebody. The lady of the house that prays and keeps the man of God in place. Certainly in my Baptist roots, I know I better say give an honor to God to the pastor. Amen. To the deacons. Oh, ain't no deacons here today? All right. To the trustees. Oh, they the money bags. They real quiet. Amen. Members, family, and friends. Now y'all will listen to me because I gave the right introduction in a Baptist church. We bless God for all of you. Certainly, I find it an honor and privilege to be here. This is my first time on a Sunday morning in this house. About 5 o'clock, I had a meltdown because I could hear my daddy say, you better act right. I said, get a seat on the edge of heaven, daddy. Amen. Because he loved him some key free. He showed enough love to him like a son and all of the sons of Sharon down through the years. And he was, had an affinity, a deep love and passion. So I told him to take a seat on the edge and I promised that I would give him his due. And so will you help me celebrate the life, the legend, and the legacy of my late father, the Reverend Dr. Melvin Floyd. Amen who saved hundreds of thousands of people on the street of Philadelphia. And yes, our family car was the van with the coffin on top. Yes, indeed. Amen. Bless the Lord for you helping me. And of course, I honor my late mom, who was the engine. Amen. Behind the man. Come on, somebody. Ladies, we'll get that a little later. Amen. The, certainly, I want to honor those that came with me from my church I, you know, this is a great church. I love it and their family. But I got the best little church in West Philadelphia. Where are my Samaritan Temple folk at? Come on, y'all. All right, there's some of them here. Amen. If you're online, picture pastor's waving at you. Amen. My elders, my deacons, servant leader. Amen. My church mother, the prophet in the house. Come on, somebody. We bless God for each of you. And that, I can't see with these lights. Is that my number one son? Oh, my God. Bless the Lord. That's my 41-year-old, y'all. Amen. He's in the house. And my baby boy, who is Deacon Gabriel. Amen. And uh, he's a powerful preacher. The hand of the Lord is on him. So y'all pray. Y'all, nobody know what I'm talking about? Yeah, okay. All right powerful singer and drummer and we pray that the Lord don't try well the devil can't touch him amen amen mama prays too much come on somebody grandma pray too much great grandma pray too much amen since this is women's month I do want to honor besides my late mother and of course my paternal and maternal grandmother the woman who spoke first into my life and that was my great grandmother 
I was eight years old in the kitchen shucking some greens. Y'all don't know what that is. Come on, somebody know what shucking greens is. Amen. Oh, I got a few gray hairs up in here. I can't see y'all, but nonetheless, I hear y'all. Amen. So y'all gonna have to holler at a sister. And she turned around and she said, daughter, I said, yes, um, because we, we spoke back and we spoke politely. Amen. So we could keep our teeth. Amen. Y'all, they just don't know. They just don't know. Amen. I said, yes, um, And she said, you're going to be high in the Lord's church. Preacher of the gospel. The first female on the paternal side. I won't leave to see it, but it will come to pass. 35 years later, it did when my father licensed and ordained me and I matriculated to the Episcopacy and now the Archiepiscopacy. Ain't it something when they can see further than you? And even if you try to run from it, come on, somebody. It going to grab hope. All right, y'all, y'all, all right. There's a word from the Lord on today. And I want you, if you can, 1 Samuel chapter 15, 1, verses 15 to 20. Amen. Reading in the New Revised Standard Version, 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 15 to 20. But Hannah answered, no, my Lord. I am a woman deeply troubled. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your servant as a worthless woman, for I have been speaking out of my great anxiety and vexation all this time. Then Eli answered, go in peace. The God of Israel grant the petition you have made to him. And she said, let your servant find favor in your sight. Then the woman went to her quarters, ate and drank with her husband, and her countenance was sad no longer. They rose early in the morning and worshiped before the Lord. Then they went back to their house at Ramah. Elkanah knew his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. In due time. Somebody say, in due time. Hannah conceived and bore a son. She named him Samuel, for she said, I have asked him of the Lord. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word for the edification of the people of God, and they say amen. Just for a few moments, trouble with me on this thought, theme, or subject. Please provoke me. Please provoke me. Or... If we from the hood, try this one. I wish you would. I, I just wish you would. Provoke, provoked, provoked is arrived from the late Middle English verb, which means invoke, summon, from the old French derivative meaning provocateur, and from the Latin pro plus vocare, which means forth to call. As an adjective, it is known as provocable. As a noun, it is a provoker. And it means to stimulate or give rise to or in someone. To deliberately make someone annoyed or angry. Very sources of provocation can be behavior, passive or aggressive, environmental factors, heat, cold, physical feelings of hunger, overeating, or just being tired, mental sources called gaslighting, nobody know about that, depression, but then oppression. Why provoking? 
And why can you be provoked? Well, to gain attention, to distract from your own weaknesses, and to show superiority because you are bored and jealous of somebody else. Your goal is not to get mad, but to get even. Hallelujah. And so the best way to handle that is to call it out. If you're from North Philly, we never backed down when a fight was called. We showed up, even if we couldn't fight. It was called a fair one. Nobody knows about those things anymore. Amen. We did the best we could. And when we got done, we shook hands, and the matter was resolved. The Bible tells us that verses such as Ephesians 6 and 4 saying, Fathers, don't provoke your children to wrath. Otherwise, mothers, they will bring you shame. Or Proverbs 13, 24, where it says, Spare the rod my parents never did, or spoil the child. But the good provoking is Hebrews 10, 24, that you will stir up love and good works in somebody. And and Ephesians 6, 13, that tells you that if you put on the whole armor of God, you'll be covered from head to toe. In this story, there are three characters. Let's talk about them for a brief moment, shall we? Elkanah, son of Jeroham, and Infernite, a Levite, who practiced polygamy with two wives. How many of y'all ladies like a man with two wives? I ain't getting no witnesses. All right. Yet we have a particular religious group that believe in more than one. All right. Amen. But he loved him some Hannah because she was the first wife. Ain't it always good to be the first? All right, lady, y'all don't seem excited. All right, amen, because there's always a second coming behind. Well, we'll leave that alone. And she was the one that even though Elkanah wanted her and wanted to give her everything, imagine a double portion of the car you want, the money in the bag, the Louis Vuitton, and everything you could dream of and still not satisfied. Panina was the second wife. Oh, man, she was fertile murder, had 10 kids, but she felt unloved, was hated and jealous of what the love that Elkanah had for her that he never gave to her. Now all I have to do, give her something, because she had 10 sons, so Elkanah wasn't that mad at her. Okay, and nobody going to give the sister no help. Ah, but then you turn around and you have Anna, who was the woman that was hard to find her genealogy, known as the first wife, was infertile, had low self-esteem, felt humiliated, embarrassed, taunted, taunted, taunted by Panina. But yet, she remained persistent, perseverant, had undoubtable faith, and was patient because she knew that one day God's word is her bond. So can I break it down for you in 2024, my sisters of a little story that we read in 1 Samuel chapter 1. Homeboy Elkanah who was the Obi-Wan Kenobi and everybody wanted, decided to set his set to a homegirl. Got with her and she was just something to see. Oh, she knew she was the queen because she sure enough acted like it. And although he loved her, he tried hard and they tried her through every means necessary to have a baby. Unfortunately, that did not come to fruition. So with permission, as in some cultures, he asked for a second wife. And Benina was having babies and they all lived up in one house. Now, how many of y'all sisters wouldn't mind having a second wife in the house with y'all I know we can share some things but that just ain't happening baby we ain't gonna kumbaya on that one amen we ain't all gonna get along come on somebody and in that moment imagine your provoker in the house. I'm going somewhere if you travel with me. Because every time Penina got pregnant, she said, nah, 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 nah. He did it again. Nah, 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 nah. He did it again. Nah, 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 nah. And she's standing there, although with her power, place, and position, dissatisfied. The pain started to wear on her, point one. The pain of all that she was feeling. 
the low self-esteem and thinking she wasn't valued, thinking that she wasn't woman enough, thinking that she might not quite measure up. The pain of wanting to give her husband the best thing that any woman could. Might have tried several times and had miscarriages. Might have tried all the IVF and it still wouldn't take. Kept on trying and trying and trying. And the pain of all the women whispering and saying, boy, she ain't nothing. Imagine all of that. And yet she kept on weeping. We will find in verses 7 to 12 that she kept on weeping and crying and pleading to the Lord. When you going to answer me? God, I've been a good wife. I've been a faithful woman to you. And you still don't hear my cry. Imagine that I heard, Savior, Savior, do not pass me by. Some of y'all in this auditorium this morning, in this sanctuary, keep on saying, when you're going to hear me, the pain is too much. I lost my mama. I lost my daddy. I lost my son. I lost my daughter. I'm worried about life. I'm about to get evicted. I don't have no money. It's short. I need you to help me, God. I'm tired of living paycheck to paycheck, deposit to deposit, trying to make ends meet. I don't know why people don't like me. All I do is show up and walk in a room. They can't stand me for some reason, and I ain't done nothing but exist, but happen to be born. But it goes all the way back to your family when you were the step to have, the unknown. You were the secret. You were the side. You were the one that everybody in the family seemed to know except you. The whisperings that happen at family reunions where people just act like you think you just came out of nowhere. And really your auntie is your mama because they set her down south, but she's never claimed you. Your son doesn't know who his daddy is because you was a good time girl. And yet the identity crisis of who I am. It's still haunting you to this day. It doesn't matter if it happened when you were 12. And 50 years later, you're still suffering. You're still wondering. You're still saying, why me, God? The pain. The pain. I was the one that was touched wrong. I was the one that was discasted. I was the one that was punished when I didn't do anything wrong. I was the one that was mistreated, disrespected, disregarded, denied. And yet, God, I don't know why you still want me here. I tried to kill myself so many times, and every time you brought me back. I think I'm losing my mind behind a man who don't love me. Man, don't worry. I'm talking to the ladies. <laughs> he tried to love me right, but ended up loving me wrong. Said, psych. I didn't mean that. Walked out. And then announced that he was already married. And Sorry. Let's be clear, some of us put up with it because we really don't want to be the wife. Y'all forgive me, I feel Melvin Floyd on me. <laughs> Just going to say what I got to say. <laughs> yeah. By choices and decisions that we made, selling ourselves short, believing the lie, and suffering the pain. But it wasn't just the pain that she was dealing with. She was wrongly accused, even by the church. Can I put a pin in it? You come to a place of worship where God is supposed to be the order of the day. And you got demons in the pews. You got black sheep 
You got wolves in sheep's clothing. They don't want you to sit on their row and don't sit by me. Won't share the Bible. Don't say good morning. Can't smile. Look at you. If you got a Holy Ghost praise, because it don't take all of that. But you don't know what I've been through this week. You don't know that I almost died last night. You don't know that I could have lost my mind. I should have been in jail, but God delivered me. I should have been in Belmont, but I'm not right around the corner. I should have lost it. But God, he kept me. He kept me. I don't even know what I was doing, but something overtook me. I knew my mama prayed for me. I knew my grandma prayed for me. Thank God for the women that prayed for us. And then I come up in church. God, look what she wearing. Mm. Who she thinks she is. Hm. Always come late. Hm. But you don't know my car broke down. I take three buses to get here. And even on a Sunday schedule, I press my way. Because I got to get to the church house. I got to get to hear a word. I don't care if I come in during the service. I don't care. I just need the Lord to talk to me this morning. Because if not, uh -huh. y'all may see me on 6 o'clock noon. All of these intercessors and people who claim they have discernment and walk by people and you can see their countenance ain't right. And you too busy being puffed up in your power, place, and position that you can't stop and say, sis, what's going on with you? You don't seem to look like yourself. Ah, the Lord told me to tell you that that whatever you're dealing with, you will overcome it. I ain't jealous of you, boo, because I know what he done for me. And everything that was taken from me, he bring him back little by little ha, step by step ha, because when I'm faithful he will be faithful to me so I need all of y'all that are super spiritual to make sure you don't walk by somebody who may leave from here and go home and commit suicide and then we all the church is all well oh my goodness oh my gracious we never knew what are you talking about God doesn't do foolishness he gives it to somebody and if you miss your assignment God help you because it ain't about you. The word of God says your testimony even for you. So what if I was a hoe? I was a good one. What? So what if I drunk? I could drink you under the table. So what if I could dance, girl, and work a pole? I was good at that, too. Don't hate boo-poo. Huh? Celebrate. Huh? And don't worry, I ain't coming because I don't like sloppy seconds. So I don't want your man. I'm just practicing for when the Lord bring me mine. That's a word from somebody. Amen. And despite the pain, she went to what our grandmothers went to, prayer. I remember hearing my grandmama and my mama, Father, I don't know what to do. Why are they in the kitchen? I don't know where the food coming from, but you're going to make a way. And the doorbell would ring and a potato and a couple of rice and a piece of chicken would show up. And she was able to feed her babies. But what happens when you can't pray? Well, the old folk used to moan. Mmm, I love the Lord. He heard my cry and pitied every groan. Long as I live, when troubles rise, I'll hasten to his throne. And when she got down on that knees and said, Mmm, God, Mmm, God, Mmm, God, Mmm, God, Mmm. God, touch my daughter, touch my son, touch my babies, touch my grandbabies, give them a right mind, bring them back to you, God, don't kill them, Lord, hurt them a little.
little bit, but please don't kill them. I just need you to get them back to you. I gave them to you, but they defiant. I gave them to you. They don't want to know you, but don't let my prayer go unheard, God. I need you, God. Mm, God. Mm, God. Oh, yeah, God. And in the pain come the prayer, but here the good stuff. Sometimes it was silent. Now, why would she have to have a silent prayer? Because you know haters always want info. Sis, what's going on? What? Clutch my pearls. And then they get on the telephone and tell three friends who tell five friends who tell ten friends. What you thought was discretion ends up being the order of the day. I don't know what that woman preached, but boy, did you hear about Sister Zuki? Girl, I heard it in the bathroom. So sometimes your prayer got to be silent. Just you and the Lord. I know you can call deaconess. I know you can call the ladies, the deacons, the ministers. But some folk, honey, they can't wait to find out something. Because you thought you was something. Oh, let me tell you, did you hear? Then when we hear about it on the news, we the first one in judgment. Oh, I knew she was. Instead of picking up the phone and saying, baby, I don't know what this is about, but I'm praying for you. For real. Please do me a favor. Stop the lie about I'm praying for you. You never call my name. You don't even remember it. You don't even know it. You know, you just hoping someday I'm somebody from somewhere. Stop lying on God like that. Act like you know it. Keep that to yourself. So after the pain and after the prayer, and even in the silence of it, verse number 18 said that she did producible action. Amen. The Bible doesn't say it, but we say it. God is an on-time God. Always on time and never late. And when she went home and said, Elkina, come on up. I want to talk to you. Amen. Right after the producible action in verse number 19, she was able to have a promise fulfilled. But that's not the end of the story. Because she gave birth to Samuel, who is one of the greatest prophets of all time. See, here's something, ladies, that I have come to find out personally. That what people discount you for, God will elevate you the more. That just because it ain't happening when they can see it doesn't mean it won't happen. It doesn't mean that when you do all you need to do in and through your pain, that God doesn't show up because he heard your cry, and then he gives you a plan of action so you can then see the result, which is the promise you've been waiting for. I know you're tired of praying for the wayward mate. I know you're tired of praying for the wayward child. I know you're tired of praying for a new job. I know you're tired of praying, Lord, just bless me. I want to hit the lottery. Well, I don't know about that. I know you're praying. But prayer works. Prayer works. Do I know anybody in here that know prayer works? The doctor told you you wouldn't make it three months, but you're still alive three years later. Hey, when you were supposed to get evicted, somehow it got overturned. Ah, the job wanted to cancel your job, but you're still working. I'm telling you, prayer works. I know what prayer can do. I know what prayer can do. Because when I take it to the Lord in prayer, everything will be all right. But after you get the promise, which is usually what happens to most of us, we then get high up off the hog. Lord, I promise you that if you get me through this, 
I'll serve you. I promise you that I'll be faithful. I'll come to church. I'll give my tithe. I'll give my offering. I'll serve you. And I promise him that I will serve him till I die. Liar. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord till I get a new car. To a little more digits before the dot in the decimal point end up having more zeros. Because you know I have to travel. I have to see the great world. The world that's already been here before you and will be here after you. Because I don't have to be faithful and I don't have to keep my word. Because God wouldn't give it to me if he didn't want me to use it. He wouldn't bless me with it if he didn't want me to show everybody just how great Hi. Oh, yes. Y'all used to see me come in Tarje. Just wait till I come in St. John. <laughs> Y'all thought that only shoes I got were out of Macy's. Oh, no, boo boo. I've elevated to Red Bottoms and Louis Vuitton. <laughs> Just wait till when I get my hair did. With assistance, it'll make me look fine, fierce, and fabulous. And I will be the envy of everybody, and I'll say, God did it. The problem is that when you keep on slapping God with the blessings he's already given you, the Bible is clear that he will leave you to a reprobate mind. And then all of them prayers start lifting. And you don't understand what's going on. Well, help me to celebrate Hannah. Because she didn't just keep her word. She then went in chapter 2 of 1 Samuel and decided to praise the Lord. I had a long history. We don't know how long she went through all that provoking with Panina. And what she thought she could have. We don't know how many times she went up to the temple praying and being criticized and mocked and humiliated and made little of. But the first thing she knew after she had that baby is I'm giving them back to the Lord. Because if you hadn't given it to me in the first place, I wouldn't be who I am. And then after I gave them back to you, I can't help but praise you. See, because when the praises go up, the blessings keep coming down. Some of us are so ungrateful, we wouldn't thank God for waking us up this morning if he was standing in front of our face. We don't praise him when the bills are due. We only praise him when they pay. We don't praise him when there are no gases in the car. We only praise him when we got money to fill it. We don't praise him when the Lord has been gooder than good and better than best. Only when he do something for us. And if I get a big tax return, I ain't giving a tithe of that because God don't need it like that. I got plans for it, but I came here today to tell you that if nothing else will help you while you are going through your pain, while you are going through your solid and no public prayer, while you are trying to do some producible action, while you get a promise and you act like you're an ungrateful person, God said, all I want you to do is praise me. I don't need you to promise me nothing you ain't going to keep, but I do want you to praise me. I need you to praise me when you open your eyes. I need you to praise me when you got the food. I need you to praise me when you're going on the bus. I need you to praise me when you're in your car. I need you to praise me in your shower. I need you to praise me in every room of your house. I need you to praise me when you're walking down the street. When you in the mall. When you in the supermarket. When you in the bank. I need you to praise me because I deserve it and I want it. And especially when you come to my house where I am supposed to be the order of the day. Where I'm supposed to be looked at because I am Jehovah Jireh. I am Jehovah Shalom. I am Jehovah Nisi. I am Jehovah Zikanu. I am God all by myself. I was before you. will be here with you. And will be after you. I am wonderful. I am majestic. I am I am mighty. I am powerful. I am a redeemer. I am a savior. I am a lover of your soul. I'm the wheel in 
in the middle of the wheel. I am your rock. I am your shield. I am your shepherd. I am your door. I am that 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 I am. Help me to praise the I am. Is he worthy? Is he good? Is he great? Is he mighty? Is he wonderful? Is he the best friend you ever had? He's brought you out of some stuff that we don't know about. So I need you to think of one good thing that God has done. And I just need you to give him the best holler, the best shout, the best jump, the best dance, the best praise you got. I bless your name. I thank you, Lord. You are good. You are. You are. You are. You are. You are. You are. Hey. Y'all don't know him like I know him. I can't help myself. I gotta give him some glory. Let the people of God say, Yeah! Yes! Oh! Yes! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. You're worthy. Woo! Oh, come on, fill the temple. I need the praise to go up. I need to say yeah. Everybody say yeah. 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 My soul said yeah. As I go to my seat, just give him your praise. Just give him your praise. Give him your praise. He's watching. He wants to see if you're grateful. He wants to see if you love him like that. He wants to feel loved. He wants to feel you. He wants to know that it's pure. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Oh, bless your name. I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless your name. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Don't stop praising him. Don't stop praising him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lord. 